good morning. In today's video, we're going to build two kitchen cabinet doors. They're going to be of the rail and style type. And we're going to be using two and a half inch wide rails and styles. We're going to be using a rail and style bit. It's a rocker traditional rail and style bit. We'll be using a, a router. So there's uh, several things happening in here. So if you've never made a cabinet door, stay tuned and we'll show you. Now, I want to clear up one thing. In today's video, you're going to see me using a uh, rocker rail and style bit, or rockler router table, rockler router table lift. A lot of, a lot of rockler products will be in today's video. Rockler does not sponsor this video. I use this equipment because it's good equipment. Now Rockler has provided it. They'll, they uh, support the channel, but they do not sponsor it. It's not a paid announcement. If I use something on my video, it's because I like it or I'm trying it. And I'll either continue to use it or I won't. But just wanted to clear that up. So stay tuned and we'll make a couple of cabinet doors. Now our rails and styles are going to be made out of two and a half inch wide stock. And the doors are going to be 21 and a quarter inches long and 13 and 3 eighths inches wide. Now to calculate the lengths of the rails and styles, it's, uh, here's how we do it. The, the rails run horizontal, the styles run vertical. Well the styles are what they are. So if this door is 21 and a quarter, then that the style is 21 and a quarter. I'll make them oversize a little so we can trim it up there in the end. But the rail has to be made the right size. And the formula for doing that is the width of, the width of your door minus two times the width of the style. So two and a half, two and a half. So we've got 13 and 3 eighths minus five. That's eight and 3 eighths. Now this rail and style bit has its own tongue and groove joinery built into it. And the tongue goes into the groove 5 sixteenths on each side. So we have to back out 5 eighths inch, 5 sixteenths on each side. So we've got the width of our door minus 2 times the width of the style. So we've got 13 and 3 eighths minus 5, which is 8 and 3 eighths, plus 5 eighths back in. So our rail needs to be 9 inches long. Stop block set up out here at 21 and a quarter. And I will just cut them off. No, <clears throat> sometimes I would make a squaring cleaning cut on this first edge, but I did that when I cut them to rough length on my miter saw. So I know this one edge is square. If I wasn't sure about it, I would do a cleaning cut and then slide it over and we'll cut the Final cut to 21 and a quarter. Now we adjust that. Now it's time to cut the joinery on the router table. And we're going to use this kind of joinery on the router table. It's made with a rail and style bit. It's also called cope and stick bit. And that's where on the on the styles we'll cut a groove and a profile along the long sides of the door. But then the short sides, it's what is called the coat cut. And you, you cut a coat cut and then you stick it into the other. As you can see it forms a good flat one, creates a lot of glue surface right here. 
But the danger with this is we have to run this through a router bit. Say this is your router bit. You have to run it through the router bit and it's only two and a half inches wide so it gets a little unsafe. So we'll use a jig called a coping sled. And you can see we've got a straight edge and we've got a, a backer here. And all we do is butt this up against the fence, put your rail face down up against the fence, and then clamp it down, and then we can run this whole thing through much safer. Give you a good close-up. I've got the bit to cut the coat cut on the rail installed. Now this is a two-bit set. This one cuts that coke cut that I just talked about. The second bit in the set cuts the, the, the rail profile that we talked about right here. It'll cut the groove for the center panel and then put kind of a little OG edge. So, and I cut some people cut the the uh, style profile first. I like to cut this one first. Uh, that way if it chips out a little then it will be cleaned up on the first pass of the other. And again, our setup for this is put our coping sled against the sled. First of all, the fence is adjusted so that the edge of the sled is in line with the fence and the bearing. You just adjust your fence to where it's a solid line, all right? Then you push your coping sled against your fence. Now, on these bits, you always want your face down. The face that's going to be outside that people will see, that will be face down. I have marked my setup block as face down. Now, Rockler sells a real good setup block. This one is for both. And this one side sets the cope, the coping bit, and this other side sets the rail bit. It's made out of a, a this high, hard, hard density poly something or another. Uh, but what I like to do is make myself a wooden one that matches. It wears a little better and uh, this one kind of scratches. But to set it up, put your setup block face down on, on the sled, both of them against the fence, clamp it down, and then you adjust your bit until until it's it sits till it sets up nicely here you can see I've, I've got the height set perfect now the two setups have been a little different because we're setting this on about a 3 16 inch platform for our sled on the other one we want it'll set it flat up against the table so you can see we're backed as we make our cut, we'll be backed by our backing block. So that'll prevent tear out from there. So now we are ready to cut the coping cut on our four rails. We're going to make two doors exactly the same side. Do your homework. Have your side pit that you want to be the face. I've got my face marked for each one of these four rails. Put it up against the fence, up against our block, clamp it down, and we are ready to make these cuts.
and that's all there is to making the coat cut. Now you may have to clean it up a little bit. Sometimes the bit depends on your wood species. This is poplar, and it's which is real stable, real flat, great for painting. But sometimes it'll uh, kind of fuzz a little bit with just a little light sand along the edge. Just a light sand on the edge, and you can see we've got just a real nice joint there. And now we'll set up and do the rails with the rail bit. I've installed the bit to cut the style for our cabinet door and I'll show you how easy it is to set up. I just put the bit in. I've not made any height adjustments. I've got my wooden setup block and face down and you can just see we're too high. And it's just a matter of lowering the router bit until it slips in. There. That is our setup. That easy. And then to set the fence, bushing, front of the bushing is in line with the fence. Lock it down. Now we're ready to cut our styles. I've identified which side of face is down, always face down. Now I'm ready to cut down. Nice, matches nice, clamp it up and it'll be a lot of glue surface there. It's just a nice joint for a cabinet door. And on the inside, you can see our little profile. Now, we'll dry fit them and measure for the dimension of the panel. Hey guys, before we move on, I just want to say I appreciate everybody that tunes in. I appreciate the comments. appreciate the feedback. At the end of this video, if you like it, give us a thumbs up and leave us some comments. And if you're a first time viewer, subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it. I've been calling it LLS. Like, leave us a comment, and subscribe. But we appreciate it. All my social media information is in the description below as well as some links to some other videos that will help you in this like the uh, router table basics and the one how to make a knob different things so but appreciate it and now let's finish these doors as I said earlier the panel sits in I think I said a quarter inch but it's actually five sixteenths each way so our panel width is the same as the rail and in this case, we said that that was 8 and 7 eighths. And the panel length is going to be the same as from this molding line to that molding line. That's the 5 sixteenths that we were talking about. And in this case, it's going to be just short of 17, about 16 and 15 sixteenths. So I need to make two panels, eight and seven eighths by 
16 and 15 16 inches long. Well, you can see I got my panels cut and I've got them dry fitted. And this is this is our doors. Now I'm going to take them apart and we'll glue them up. Before you start your glue up, you want to make sure you have all of your tools. You have your glue, your brushes, your clamps. Make sure everything is nearby. And what we're going to do here, you see me picking the residue out of the joint. Remember when we cut the joint, the router bit left a little fuzz on the edge. Well, all of that has to be cleaned up. That's all I'm doing here, light sanding on the edge of the joint to get the fuzz and residue out of the joint so that it'll pull nice and tight. And it's just a matter of uh, adding glue to all of the surfaces. You see me using this little Rockler glue brush. And they're pretty nice because you don't have to clean those up. Glue doesn't stick to them. It's real easy to wipe them away. But we make sure that glue is in all surfaces, both in the rails and in the styles. <coughs> and now we're going to insert the panel. And when we made our panel, we made sure that it was square and to the dimensions and insert it. And then it, this helps keep the door square as we apply glue to the last sections of the joint. And as we apply the last style, that completes the door. <coughs> and then it's just a matter of putting some light clamp pressure. It doesn't need to be excessive it's enough to pull the joint tight. You don't want to squeeze all the glue out of the joint. So it's just a light pressure. And then check it for square. And let it dry. I just glue the other one. I took the doors out of the clamps and the joints glued up real nice. And here they are after taking them out. I, I sanded all the joints real lightly and safe. And then the last thing I did is I put a, try to get close so you can see this, I put a 11 degree bevel around all four sides and that's so that when the door is sitting on the cabinet somebody can grab it because I don't think that this family is going to use drawer, uh, door pulls so we put an 11 degree bubble on it so that they can get some grip and pull it out the last thing that we'll do is I'm going to paint them white and then I'm going to put European hinges on it that'll be for another video so that completes our rail and style door build. Again, thanks for watching. All the information is in the description below. And until next week, be safe. The attack of the giant lizard. Oh no!